Alrighty, it's Thursday, March 29th, 2012, and it's time for comments X. Well, I did some fixing up back here, uh, and normally I'd be reading from, uh, uh, I'm going to be reading uh, for the uh, Bass Institute's uh, documentary on going uh, beyond uh, going beyond the simple reading books and into uh, adventures in the library. Which starts ironically with uh, with dictionary re dictionary reading, which kind of gets you into uh, exploring through things beyond the the the, the standard uh, the obvious printed word into the subtext of, of what's been written there. And so I've got my dictionary here. We saw the dictionary, and I fixed up so that now I have <coughs> this new one here. This nice big book. Here it is. Here it's uh, an old uh, science and ens science encyclopedia. Uh, it's actually pretty good. It's uh, pre 1960s, so we're in the same time frame as uh, the book that we have. Uh, the as the dictionary. And let's see if we can get an actual date on here. Uh, yeah, we're in 1960s there. So we're in the we're in the time frame that we want to be in. Uh, as I said, uh, as long as something is uh, uh, 1960s and before, uh, you have a significant difference in uh, in thought. Basically, uh, around 1980, uh, they began removing a so-called cleansing of texts, uh, <laughs> from objectionable, what they call objectionable materials. And this is the bizarre part. The more liberal our society became, uh, starting in 1980, before our society, but before 1980, uh, 1980, our society wasn't that liberal. Uh, the human rights that we have today, the, the civil rights that we have today, didn't exist. There was still a legal divide between black and white. Uh, there was still a, a, a fair amount of segregation, uh, and di different groups did, just simply didn't make you. Even it was even to the point where uh, you had separate music channels. You had black music channels, and then you had white music channels, and most, although you had some crossover, where you had uh, uh, white people, uh, black people being played, some of the music was played on white channels. Most of the stuff that was specifically black stayed on black channels. Uh, I remember this one channel that was called WBLK, and it was specifically a black channel, it, and you can sort of see this sort of segregation, this this difference uh, in in views, and even up, I think it's up till 1980. The, I think there was something about I got to look at, look at this to see. Uh, uh, I think even on album covers, black people couldn't really de be depicted on an al album cover as well. That there were there were certain rules all the way up until 1980 uh, that sort of separated blacks and whites and, and people of ethnic origin from, from the average white person. Uh, and from 1980 and beyond, that changed. And our society became more liberal and more uh, human rights and civil rights came in. But as that occurred, because it was being brought in by the socialists, and it wasn't necessarily a truly a freedom movement, it was really more of a socialist movement. Uh, what they did is they started going into the textbooks and to the various different texts and removing what they considered to be objectionable or racist materials. And what happened, they ended up cleaning out so much that most of what you're learning today is really generic. A lot of the actual history that occurred um, just simply isn't in a lot of the textbooks in the way that it was uh, that you could have seen uh, prior to 1980. 
And this is why I like like the old text better because a lot of the, the, then if, if they've gone in and cleaned up the newer uh, the texts on the newer, they they uh, you're not getting the full sense of what was said or what was thought at the time, and you're really missing out uh, a, a large perspective of how society in this society thought and how the thoughts of society, the, the standards of society, impacted this person who was the author. Uh, and this is why you know you you, you know, when you when you're reading a book written by an author, but you're reading an, an edition of it, something that's, that's been sort of copy edited, uh, you need to be careful because uh, you're not necessarily uh, seeing everything that the author intended you to see because the book's been edited or altered by an editor. And what you're doing is, is you're seeing the editor's interpretation of the author's work. Same thing in school. Uh, most of your textbooks um, come from not professors or researchers, but they come from other teachers who are, uh, the best way to put it is dumbing down the material from university uh, about history, math, and so on and so forth. And this includes science. And a lot of the understanding who, from the professors who, do, who actually do the research is actually lost inside the text, inside the high school textbooks and in in, in, in low grades. So basically, what you're having is you have, in this age of information, in this age of, uh, that has internet access, the the accuracy to the text that you have access to are extremely poor. Most uh, high school students really have no idea what's beyond their standard commercial books that that are you know that are popular and stuff like that. They really haven't dug beyond, and this is something that should be done. And this is where the Bassus and Institute uh, Adventures in the Libraries will take you. It will take you beyond that. Uh, um, that that sort of the standard view of things, and you really do, do need to see this because there are certain things in society that right now you're not aware of. That as soon as you become an adult at 18 or 19, you will become aware of, and you'll find that society isn't as forgiving or nice as you think it is, and this includes a lot of this whole thing about cyberbullying, is that cyber cyberbullying and bullying itself is a consequence of the way the overall society behaves. And a lot of people, even though they're against cyberbullying, are, gu are guilty of this as well. And I'll give you an example. One of the things I said, I said, I saw, or watched this movie, Sydney White, and one of the things they consider to be bullying is, is not inclusion, to, to not, uh, would be something to be to be exclusionary, not to, not not to include people in your circle. But the problem is, is that when well, I understand this to a certain degree, you can't force people to like you. And just because someone doesn't like you doesn't necessarily mean that they're mean. They just somebody just they don't like you. you know, there's maybe a personality thing that 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 you know that just you just simply it doesn't you don't get along that well. That's all. So, you shouldn't be offended by and this. Is the, we're, we're, I think we have to approach cyberbullying uh, because even those who are promoters of anti-cyberbullying, if you look at what they're doing politically and how, because a lot of the cyberbullying stuff is connected politically, uh, you'll find they're doing the same cyberbullying that they're talking about, right? They're talking against cyberbullying, and then they're doing the exact same thing. And they'll come out and attack people uh, for what they believe. Uh, and it's simply because they believe one way, the other person, their opponent, believes another way. So instead of accepting the other person's beliefs, right, and just sort of keeping it at that, that you two have two different beliefs, there's this attempt to recruit the person into your belief. And when you fail to do so, 
there's an anger that pops up. That as soon as the anger pops up, you begin to attack the person. Uh, and it's typically verbally that you're attacking the person. There's two forms of attack. There's a verbal attack, and then there's a physical attack. Most of the attacks, and this is what cyberbullying is, is a verbal attack. Uh, I've been through bullying myself in, uh, in, in high school and junior high and elementary school, and uh, verbal, uh, verbal abuse was one thing, but uh, I think uh, the worst part of it was the uh, physical bullying you know, the physical attacks, because there was just simply no way to defend yourself. Uh, I was uh, the smallest kid in my class, one of the smallest kids in my class. I was very skinny at the time, and I was basically an easy target for everybody, for all the bigger kids in class. And this was sort of the situation that I sort of grew up in, and this was in, you know, in the 70s, and as I went to one, one of the schools that uh, uh, my friend Angela knows uh, in, in junior high, and essentially my experience in junior high was uh, I hated being in school, I hated being in class, I spent as much time as I could be in, in the library, uh, I had been separated from the rest of the main classes uh, and put into a special ed program even though I'm now a scientist and a professor, uh, uh, back then there was not special ed. And I didn't like what they were teaching me special. I didn't like being in class, so I spent more, I just simply walked out of class and went to the library. But it's, it's hard enough being different. It's hard enough then we had put, put the, putting kids in special classes or giving them special attention that isolates them even further. But what I saw, and I saw this from, from the personal perspective, that popular kids, particularly the girls, have very specific issues where this whole popular thing turns on them. And this is one girl, I've known, known her since so I was little, and they, the problem is that in grade three, she was my bully, but it didn't bother me that she'd always beat me up after, you know, at recess and stuff like that and sit on me because I had a crush on her, so that was my way of sort of, you know, having some contact with her. And, but in junior high, she went off into the pop of the crowd and I went down into the, uh, uh, the, to the uh, section that had no social status whatsoever, so I was basically invisible until uh, one day, I think it was in grade 8 and grade 9, uh, it was just right after the summer, and the popular crowd had started a rumor with one of the, the popular kids in class was able to go on vacation with her, and he bragged about all the different things he did to her on his vacation, and basically she went from this cool part of the girl uh, to uh, a slut over, overnight, and uh, she lost all her friends, people weren't talking to her, uh, and you saw this, you know, once happy person go from the top of the popular ladder all the way down, just a major time. It was literally, it was literally in a matter of, week, a matter of weeks, it was after it was within the first three weeks after we came back from uh, from uh, summer, summer summer vacation. Uh, within the first three weeks, uh, she had gone from the top to the bottom, and then she transferred out of the school to a private school. So, is it you know this this cyber this bullying this, and the cyber bullying has been going on for a long long time. Uh, I don't see it stopping. The, 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 I was looking at these uh, the, the movie Bully. I don't think anything's going to stop. It's not, it's not going to stop with, with that movie, Bully. It's not going to... Uh, I saw the movie uh, uh, Sydney White with... Uh, what's her name, is it? Uh, I can't remember. She was, in, she was on... Uh, she was one of, the, one of the original Nickelodeon stars. Uh, I can't remember her name right now. It's on the tip of my tongue, but I can't remember it. And uh, she played the, this sort of geek princess... 
and that's what it was, it was just sort of a geek princess type of thing. It was, it, it was supposed to be, supposedly they were marketing this as the modern Snow White, but it really wasn't the modern Snow White. It was a remake, a Nickelodeon remake of Revenge of the Nerds. And uh, surrounded this uh, sort of uh, sorority girl who gets turfed out of her sorority. And uh, she's pledging as a freshman and winds up in um, the uh, the uh, geeks and nerds uh, frat house. Uh, so then there are seven of them. That's where it's, you know, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs and Sidney White and the Seven Dwarfs. But the plot, uh, that whole that whole line there was so thin. Uh, as you watch the movie, if you knew the movie uh, Revenge of the Nerds, uh, you could see uh, that it was closer to Revenge of the Nerds than it was uh, Snow White. Uh, Snow White. And the whole thing, and the whole time, this is where it would have gone back. I, I always identify with Revenge of the Nerds because it's sort of the way I came up. Uh, I was sort of identified in that crowd. Uh, most of the people I hang out with, uh, particularly on the internet, that sort of tend to like more are uh, on that that sort of that side of things. I will hang out with other people, but uh, my tendency is uh, uh, more of the geek girl type of thing. That's where I sort of tend uh, to hang out more and sort of uh, gravitate towards. Uh, just the way I was when I was younger. Uh, this is one of the things I got beat up for, is uh, I like to jump rope with the girls rather than go out and uh, play fight with the guys. Uh, I know, I, just, I was never into, I was never into playing war in terms of uh, fighting and stuff like that. I wasn't into that. I wasn't into uh, a, lot of the other st a lot of that other stuff that, the, that, that standard guys do. Uh, even later on in, in, t in junior high and middle school, uh, my approach to things was uh, significantly different uh, than the standard guy. It didn't mean that I didn't like girls. It just it, it, it wasn't necessarily a Freudian thing. It just was a I was the type of person that I liked what I liked, and it didn't matter if uh, someone else liked it or not. I, w I would still like it, and, and it, I, I'd always be. Uh, you know, and have the standard music that everyone likes, you know, if, if it's hanging out with a group, I'd have all the sta standard music. But then I'd also have something I shouldn't like, and, uh, you know, as soon as they find out, and this is what usually happens, usually if, if I'm within a crowd for a month, two, two months, first month is okay, the second month starts to go downhill, and by the end of the second month, I'm gone. And this is, this is, this is, this is, and the pattern, I find the pattern doesn't change. I mean, I would just recently, uh, believe it or not, kicked out of a nerd fighters group. <laughs> I was in on Facebook. I was on uh, Nerd Fighters of New York because uh, I'm up in Ontario, so I guess they extended up to uh, they extended it this far. And I don't know. I was on and on and on there. I was trying to participate and post some of the stuff from my com my comments X, uh, but that was specific to reading and stuff like that, and to uh, geeks. And anytime I did something on geeks like this, I'd post it to. Uh, to the list, because you know other people posting stuff to there like that. So I just, I just said I'd, I'd do my bit. I wasn't ex see. I'm not exactly the same as a nerd fighter. Um, again, I don't fit in exactly where everyone you know in any specific group. I'm not specific to any one group. And most of the nerd fighters are literary nerd fighters. They're t they're mostly. Uh, um, people who do a lot of reading. They're not up in the sciences, they're not in the physics, uh, or very few of them are anyways. And so, uh, I posted my stuff, and just uh, yesterday, uh, when I went to look to see what, what I was going to do, because it was, I had something that, that I was talking again about my books yesterday, and about ha Harry Potter, and uh, um, the Hunger Games and how Hunger Games is connected to George Orwell's 1984 and that you can do a book to book comparison between the two uh, and that uh, Harry Potter uh, wasn't the original Harry Potter the, from, from uh, J.K. Rowling that you have a prior, prior history to Harry Potter uh, you have 1980, uh, 1980's Harry Potter but not called the, the, but the, the book isn't called Harry Potter and nor is the movie uh, 
but the question is whether you could go further on into history with Harry Potter, and that's what I was going to post yesterday uh, in terms of uh, from a comments actually that's what my, com my comments text was about that. I went to look and to post it, I couldn't find the uh, Nerds RL group uh, on the groups list that's on the sidebar of, uh, of my Facebook page, the ho on, on the home page. And what I realized is that I was kicked out of the group. <laughs> so, uh, and that was neither here nor there. So what I did is, is that uh, I realized, I think a lot of this, and this is where nerd fighters are, but are with what they're all about, is nerd fighters are primarily about John Green and the Fault in Our Star, that book Fault in Our Stars. And this group sort of surrounds that. Uh, and I, get, I, get, I'm, I can't, I've never been the type of person to 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 gravitate around one particular thing and have this be my main center. So, although by definition, a loose definition, I am a nerd fighter that I fight world suck, uh, according to uh, uh, John Green. Uh, I'm not specifically a nerd fighter in that I'm not particularly a John Green fan. Uh, if I have my choice of books, my genre of books, uh, and I'm on, uh, I'm now on good reason. I said a number of channels that I follow are of the uh, book readers types, and they're on these uh, on the Goodreads, uh, Goodreads.com, and I'll post my stuff down below. That uh, I'm mostly into the classical. I'm into historical books. I love ancient books. If I can find an ancient manuscript, that's great. You know. Uh, I'm learning Greek. I'm eventually going to be learning uh, Hebrew, Aramaic, and Syriac. Uh, I want to learn uh, to read the Egyptian manuscripts, the uh, papyruses. Um, that's sort of you know, and this is this is not this is, this is what the weird part is is that this is the fun part of my hop, uh, what I call the non work. It, 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 all my work is hobby related. I, I like astrophysics. I like you know. Um, I like to, my, my, my main books that I read that are in my bathroom, my bathroom library is quantum physics, it's uh, uh, advanced calculus, vector calculus, um, you know, theories and mechanisms in organic chemistry. That's, that, these are pretty, for me, these are standard reads. So it's not that these aren't out of my reads, but I have, I read all the areas, I, from, from fiction to the sciences, I read all the different areas. So. Uh, I've gone beyond the fiction now, but I said, you know, I got, I got, for some reason, I don't know why it was, I got, can end up getting kicked out of the nerd fighters group, and if you're there to support, to sort of support world, you know, to prevent world suck, and now all of a sudden you become exclusionary because, uh, you, uh, you know, someone doesn't fit in with your type. Then you're no longer, by definition, if that's what it is, a nerd fighter. You know, you're you're sort of like a cult now. Uh, so what I did is I set up something, and I've done this a while ago, and I'm uh, I'm st bringing it out slowly. I set up this group called Geek of the Year. It, it is what it, it's like. Uh, it's, all, it's a very geekish list. Um, and Geek of the Year is uh, the is the last part is the Greek way you would say uh, ology. Uh, all you know is so, you know biology. Uh, and it's going to be by by Olaia in Greek, right? Uh, and it basically means study or word, uh, the words, uh, the studies, and so on and so forth. So that's the way it comes out. Uh, and it's basically a place for all nerds, geeks, and wh however you don't fit into society, if you've sort of been knocked off the uh, social ladder, uh, this group is for you. Uh, I said I'll post the link. There's a Facebook page uh, you can go to, and then from the Facebook page, there's a group that you can go and hang out in if you want to. And I think this is the way I want to fight cyberbullying. I think this is the best way to fight cyberbullying is if people know they're not alone, that there's somebody that they can talk to, then um, they're not going to commit suicide. There's an, it, gives, it gives them a sense that, hey, I'm not alone. Anyways, uh, it's time to get the day started. Uh, I've got 10 minutes until I start uh, doing uh, the assessment for the news. Uh, I did some of it last night. So anyways, 
I will see you for the news tonight. Alrighty, take it easy.